Hello. Uh, two hours late. <laughs> nope. Uh, I hope everyone's doing okay on this. Definitely a Monday and not a weekend. Like my brain told me it was. We're gonna work, we're gonna finish exhaustion today, which is appropriate because, oh boy. Oh, oh boy. I worked 52 hours last week and that ended this morning. And I, I just, I shouted vacation and went to bed. And when I woke up, I just assumed I had no responsibilities. <laughs> uh, so I, now I'm going to try and figure out what layer everything is on. Um, I apologize for, um, for just skipping right out on, uh, on stream in general. <laughs> I would love to say that I was doing something productive, like vacuuming or doing dishes, but I was playing Animal Crossing because my friend Steph offered to make me a golden, <laughs> a golden watering can, and maybe now I'll get purple pansies at last. Uh, because everyone in the world plays Animal Crossing now, it's the only way we get to go outside. So that's what happened. Uh, and then my roommate, as I got up, I don't know, to feed my cat or something, I got up to do something and my roommate was like, hey, are you gonna stream today? And I was like, oh no, oh no, it's, it's Monday and also already 6.30. Oh. Um, ooh. I, yeah, I, Music Bot has worked out better than I anticipated, honestly. Um, I thought, well, this will be a good way to, uh, am I gonna, nope, that was the wrong button. Um, Music Bot has been, has been more fun than I expected Music Bot to be. Did that not do the, I, but I want, I want to change the color. No. Oh, <laughs> my bad. Selected the wrong layer this whole time. I do not remember the keyboard shortcut to hide the the selection lines. Blocky temptress. I mean, I don't know. Okay, wait, maybe it's this combination? This combination? Yeah, that was the combination. Good. Uh, anyway, yeah, music music bot has been uh, has been more fun than I than I sort of expected. Either I could go lighter. Lighter might be more fun. Hmm. I'm trying to get it to show up, the lines to show up on the background. I either have to go lighter than the background or darker. Oh, well, our craft, there we go. It's it's fine. It was it was it was meant to be. Uh, yeah, no, music music bot music bot I assumed would just be some background noise. I had no idea that music bot was going to be so exciting. 
Um, and I'm glad your internet is back up, Arcraft. So that you can... Hmm. I'm gonna start with lighter, and if I hate it, I'll fix it later, maybe. Maybe. Darker just feels doesn't work. Okay. We're doing this. We're going with it. A decision has been made. Sticking to my choice. The Temptress Nebula. Oh my. Yeah, sorry, Arcraft. Uh, it is the, the middle of the night for you. And, uh... And I did not mean to, uh... I did not mean to lie to you about streaming. Let me try and pick a good, it needs to be like a yellow, like a good bright yellow green, but not too, I don't know, there maybe. Uh. <laughs> oh dear. Wait, if, if it's two if it's two hours late and you got up at one in the morning, so it's what, like three in the morning now? That's Well that's quite the shift. Yeah, something had happened. I forgot what time was. Entirely and completely. But otherwise, all is well. Um, yeah, pandemic time is, is strange. Um, And I just had a very tiring week last week, and like it, working the whole weekend skews my sense of time pretty badly. So I had, I had lost my ability to, to differentiate. Ah, uh, okay, it's four in the morning. Island time, preferably while on an island. I mean, in fairness, I'm usually still awake by then. I am a night person. Hello, Otenchi. Thanks for thanks for joining my definitely not the the, the time that was scheduled stream. Hope that, uh, hope that I'll manage to be entertaining enough to make up for it. I, I'm about to the point where I'm just going to start streaming Animal Crossing if I can figure out how. Just be like, you know what? Fine. 
this is this is what we're doing now. We're gonna we're gonna watch me build a, a tiny museum cafe. In uh, in an imaginary town. Oh, an unlikely sleuth. It's very noir today, Temptress, Nebula, and an unlikely sleuth. It's like a sci-fi noir. I like it. I'd tune I'd tune in for the for the sci-fi noir. Ooh, our craft. Losing shift sounds like it's gonna be a problem. I hope that you are doing okay. My work turns out to be a little bit more wobbly schedule-wise lately, but it's still there for the most part. Um, or as there as it ever was, given that it's freelance, so it's just whatever happens. <laughs> just point a webcam at her switch. Oh, that's right, Arcraft. You you live in a country that won't let you starve to death because you don't have a job. Oh. I'm streaming from from third world America <laughs> where they're eager to get us back to work so that we uh, don't get to collect unemployment benefits anymore So that's good. At least we don't have to worry about our craft. <laughs> Living in a country with a social support supposed social support structure in place. Nationalized healthcare, you know, just just all of those things. Just zoom out to show that word again. Uh. I am still working on pottery solutions. Um, I, I think I still have a place that will fire, but they are very bad about emailing me back. As in, I asked them if dropping off this Thursday was okay last week on like Tuesday and I have not heard from them at all so I don't know we will see how that goes but I still have hope because I would like to fire pottery again And we'll finish this illustration today, probably. Basically, they're just the greens of the leaves. Maybe three more colors, similar to the flowers, about three colors. And some tweaking.
Yeah, lack of communication is 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 not helpful. It's especially not helpful when you're attempting to manage what amounts to contactless delivery of a large group of fragile items <laughs> that you don't want to carry out and pack into your car unless you're sure they're gonna make one trip. Like, I can't drive there with a bunch of fragile pottery and then drive home and keep- it's, it's like a risk of catastrophe every time I move it around. Until it is fired, it is extremely fragile. So we won't be dropping it off until uh, they email me to tell me that it's okay to do so. Yeah, traveling, traveling with pottery is hilariously stressful. Um, I actually use, oh, I would, if it was the other studio, I would usually prefer to bring it in um, when it was still leather hard, when it was still sort of damp enough that it would have some, some strength. And then uh, let it dry the rest of the way in the studio next to the kiln, basically. So I could eliminate some of the risk of snapping fragile dry pottery. But tis not a possibility. We must work with what we have. What we have is one very large goose of unfired bone dry pottery. But I would dearly like to not have to worry about breaking anymore. Just be really great if it were fired. That would be so helpful. Also, we've solidly reached the point where it would be irresponsible for me to bring this much pottery into a group studio once it reopens and be like, hey, uh, could you fire three months worth of pottery, please? So I need a solution one way or another. And we'll, uh... We'll see what happens. Mankind will prevail. Well, that's the the temptress nebula, the unlikely sleuth, and mankind will prevail. It's a it's a happy science fiction noir. It's got a it's got a happy ending. So that's nice. True, that's a nice that's a nice change from from usual from usual bot. So we'll see. Monday next week is likely to be a game stream. I don't know if it'll be Stardew Valley's darkest timeline again. Or if I'll attempt to, uh, to figure out how to stream from a from a switch light, which could be impossible, actually. Uh, I don't know. And uh, you know, you may you may have to watch me tell you the story of Leopold the lion, the lion Animal Crossing neighbor, who I'm pretty sure is a serial killer. <laughs>
um, art craft. It sort of depends because I don't know how many people in my studio can work from home. Uh, I, because I'm a freelance artist who already works from home, I have a work a workbench set up. Um, and the space to to do pottery work here. Um, I don't know how many people do from the studio. I don't know how many people just work at the studio. One of the flowers at the bottom has a tiny corner of green missing? What? What? Where? So yeah, I don't I don't actually know how many people will be will be doing any pottery. The pointy one. No, no, I still don't see it. Oh, that's an overlap problem. It's not missing. It's that the blue is on top of it. That's a layer problem. <laughs> it's, our, our, it's been bothering our craft this whole time since I scrolled away. It's like, no, you missed a spot. I mean, it's fair. I'm, I'm literally doing one thing, which is coloring inside the lines in a single color of green. There's no, there's no, there's no exciting distraction to what's going on. It's just me coloring inside the lines. The other thing I actually really need to figure out about pottery is uh, I've got a lot of pieces sort of trapped in that studio. Um, the sheep teapots in there, the sheep bowls are in there, um, and the, the, the bird riveted teapot set is partly glazed and in there. Um, and it's just, it's just stuck there. Oh good, I'm glad I'm glad, Mirafora, that the coloring time is soothing. Uh, I've been using Monday as as mostly a work on the thing that you're working on. Finish finish some personal art time. For when I don't just forget that it's Monday and that I was supposed to stream. When I when I still have my bearings on what day and time it is. Anyway. I'm starting to think we may need three, four colors of foliage, because I feel like the bigger leaves need to be a slightly darker green than sort of I feel like these bigger leaves need to be a little bit darker. I don't know. We'll see. Make your lunch, our craft. Good luck at work. I hope you have a good day. Yes, morning glories. 
closed wilting morning glories with the word exhaustion. Yes, Mirafora, what is time? Um, I stand behind the thing I retweeted that said the 73rd of March is a lovely spring day. That's just, I don't know, time stopped at some point in mid-March. And uh, that's just where it stayed this entire time. I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you. It's, uh, time has stopped being real. Um, but yeah, I think there needs to be a darker green. I want the bright, fresh green for the for the sort of new, new leaves because morning glories are even more saturated than this, really. But I think it needs some some leaf depth. You have to remember to keep occasionally zooming out and uh, showing everybody the progress. Just the whole, the whole big, this is a very, exhaustion's a long word. Yeah, it's, I, I don't, none of these, and all of these are kind of, they're, they're all kind of a little bit desaturated. Um, even the fairly bright anger one is, is still a little bit faded, um, because that's kind of the point. It's part of the concept. But yet, yeah, weirdly, pottery has been the thing that has made me, that has made time and, and pandemic problems sink in for me. Um, because there's a point at which uh, you, I realized I had to stop just sitting it out and hoping that I would get to go back to the studio I used. Because that does not look like it's going to happen anytime soon. Certainly, even even if various businesses start to open back up with precautions, uh, that's just a, a city-run open studio. So it would definitely be uh, more than ten people in a room. Therefore, a mistake. But I do not just rely on them for firing. I also use we have group glazes oops um, we have especially dipping glaze I just can't do here it's not safe uh -oh. too many too much mixing, too much powder, too much chemicals. I well, I could use a respirator, but I'd still I'd have to keep it outside. I have a cat. Um, it'd be. I don't have a. I don't have a dedicated studio space for that kind of thing. Um, and if I got a wheel, it would be a desktop wheel. So I would still only be able to produce fairly small thrown things like mugs. Which maybe the next step, frankly, is to get some more glaze and uh, get a desktop wheel. <laughs> Try it, yeah. Music bot, music bot um, is trying to cheer me up. It wants me to know that it forgives me for streaming two hours late, which is just kind of it. So 
so yeah, that's kind of been my side, my side mental occupation. It's trying to figure out um, what not being able to use group assets and resources means for my attempts to be a potter. Because um, realistically, I, I can't I can't make enough selling pottery to justify really setting up a studio at home. The electricity cost of a kiln alone. Not to mention the thing itself, and I'm almost certain I would have to do some electrical magic. Because I think they run on a non-household voltage, I'd have to do some research. But, in general, I'm trying to work out the best way to carry on making pottery, doing pottery streams, doing what I love, um, without access to, to group resources. So we'll see how it goes. Because there is a limit to the amount of unfired pottery I can just possess at a given time before I should stop before it's becoming a burden. Corporate meddling. It 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 was in a good place, and then and then it read the news. Yeah, seriously. Um, but in a very real way, especially for the arts community, um, the loss of those community resources is, is very damaging. There are a lot of artistic pursuits that are almost impossible to, to keep up with on your own. Anything that glass blowing, things that require specialized equipment, specialized facilities, um, almost always are done in groups. Um, they're almost always done in group studios or community studios. And loss of access to those spaces means loss of ability to, to do the work, really. I mean, the, so at the the cost of the cost of firing at the place, and sort of this is the average cost of other places that I've seen, is uh, twenty five dollars per square foot, and you have to fire twice. So that's if you assume, for example, the goose, probably a full twenty five dollars. That's fifty dollars of firing alone for that sculpture. Whereas firing is just included in the uh, in the community studio, so you get access to glaze and working time, and then you just leave your stuff there, and it gets fired eventually. Um, so for the cost of firing just the goose, 
that would be about my month of Monday Night Studios at the community. Um, also, a kiln has to be vented, Arcraft. Um, or it should be vented uh, so that you don't poison yourself. I assume there's someone who has one in their like laundry room and doesn't vent it, but they're incorrect. I don't have a garage, you see. So I can't just shove it out of doors-ish. So anyway, point being that, uh, that the cost of paying for firing without selling a significantly ramped up amount of pottery is uh, unsustainable. Um, or just only making smaller pieces. Uh, $25 to fire, you know, 12 mugs is a lot different than $25 to fire a single very large goose. Oh yeah, Ocean Hotel. Sounds like a good vacation, although it is a minor key. So I'm wondering if it's under the ocean and possibly there are sea monsters. Um, Mirafora, I do sort of, I do a couple of craft shows locally. Uh, now I don't because no one does. Um, I sell it online for the most part. on the website uh, and uh, and sort of a fairly slow pace of sale is fine based on my cost at the community studio because uh, I don't need to sell that much part of part of the uh, proceeds are basically taken from my patreon which is in large part to support the streams so anytime I'm streaming pottery Part of that is sort of paying for the rest of the pottery process, paying for the clay and such. Um. So, yeah. Yeah, that's the that's um, it's a less of a drag for me because as I said, I don't I don't do it that much. But um, for a lot of artists, the 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 lack of craft fairs and shows and and conventions is essentially them losing their job. Um, so if you've ever thought of having a commission from an artist for I don't know a role playing character or a thing that you enjoy, just uh, just any kind of art at all. Uh, there are a lot of them on Twitter right now uh, who would be getting commissions and selling prints and doing a lot of their income from shows that are now cancelled. So if you can afford it, now is the time. Because I know from experience that you can make at like a single convention like maybe emerald city comic con you can make your month's budget you could be pulling you know three four thousand dollars and relying on that as your main source of income for the rest of that month supplementing it with a little bit of freelance work and a little bit of online sales and a little bit of online commissions, but for the most part, online sales will never be as good as in-person sales. They just don't match up as far as art is concerned. Because it's a different experience for people. Because people often show up to a fair, a festival, craft show, whatever. They show up looking to purchase things. So, 
So yeah, one of the un one of the, the largely unseen impacts is that that idea that well they'll just sell online and just selling online doesn't really make up for it. So yeah, thank you Mirafora for helping support support artists right now. I am I am lucky in that my my personal problem is a very specific how to justify a pottery expense problem. I could just wait it out and choose not to fire pottery. I have that option. Um, my professional work is mostly animation and it's for the most part the same as it always was. There's been delays it's harder to find new clients right now, projects get cancelled more readily or pushed back, but the work is still there, and it's always been remote, so there's not a lot of confusion or ramp up around that. So I am lucky that I have not been relying on income from sources that have disappeared. And that my only tricky question at the moment is trying to work out how to balance basically a side thing that I love and don't want to give up. This place feels unnatural. Thanks, MusicBot. Um, and Ian Figma's made, uh, it's the thing about freelance is that you're, it's always uncertain. Um, it's more uncertain now, but you don't feel it as much because you're used to it. I rarely have things booked more than a month out. Um, very, very rarely do I have projects booked sort of more than a month ahead. So it's not, it's not as much of a pressure sort of anxiety wise when it's just already expected. Everything else is still uh, a pressure anxiety wise, but, but I can buy groceries and pay my rent and that is very good. I am very glad. And hopefully I will figure out the right combination of things that people want and tiers of patrons and such to keep the pottery going. Or we'll just start making very small sculptures for the next month, uh, only small fish. Decorative beads. Very tiny octopus. Yeah, quail pendants. Basically, basically, what may happen is I start making a lot of small jewelry-like things. Um, that 
that can be cheaply shipped and uh, don't take up a lot of kiln space. One thing I have considered is doing a $15 patron tier that gets the other stuff and also like some sort of little stamped or small sculpted pendant with their prints. So, um, I don't know if you remember the, the sheep, uh, the soy sheep seal I made for, uh, for Auntie Shepherd, but, um, when I sort of used that to make impressions in clay, stamps like that, um, quail, yeah, quail pendants. Probably, yeah, probably a fair number of, uh, of cut-out circle stamped pendants. Roll a slab, cut out a little circle, stamp an oxalotl on it. Um, something small and lightweight that's easy to ship, but can be new every time and exciting. Yes, glazed. Probably, probably glazed, either with an underglaze to bring out the details, um, or a, a clear breaking glaze, or a semi-clear breaking glaze, sort of like the um, celadon I used on the snake teapot and the snake mugs, so that it shows the details. Uh, because that's I the trick the trick with the trick with the, the patreon rewards is that it needs to be something that people want to keep getting that's why the small prints i felt were like a, a good option because you can keep them you can give them away it's new each time So that, I think, works well. I'm failing to find a color that works here. Um, so yeah, looking, looking for maybe that color. Looking for a solution that is similar in pottery. Something that And that feels too dark. Yep, we'll go with that. So yeah, small. Uh, yeah, I, I do. Um, I do five by seven prints quarterly for patrons, which means that every few months, the coolest thing that I've made shows up at your house. Um, I say the coolest thing that I've made. The, the first one that I sent out was the POTU. So, um, so I admit to slightly trolling my patrons. Yeah, I like, I like the small prints. I feel like they're, they're collectible. They're the kind of thing that I like to get in the mail. Um, it's nicer than a postcard because they're on a, like a, higher quality print paper there with are more archival inks but it's a similar sort of I can stick a bunch of these up on my wall I can put them in a little notebook they're easy to keep easy to store easy to give away they're a really good size yes exactly Yes, art craft. I I freaked art craft out with the POTU when I first added it to my corner of my stream. And then I had the gall to mail them a print of the POTU. Uh, so yeah, basically I'm looking for a pottery solution that, that works as well to my mind as the small prints 
which is why I was thinking maybe little pendants. You can use them as Christmas ornaments or hang them on things or wear them or, I don't know, stick them in your potted plants. Hello, they might be scientists. Thank you for join joining us between your Zoom meetings when you could be not looking at a screen. I'm, uh, I'm attempting to make up for forgetting that it was Monday, but mostly I find I'm, I'm just rambling about what I want to do with Patreon. <laughs> oh, Zoom meetings. I will say that I, that I had my first sort of full role-playing group experience with Zoom recently. And it's surprisingly good for it. The little side chat is helpful and the ability to change your background actually kind of makes up for a lot of the fact that you can't be in person. So we would change our backgrounds every time we were in a new scene. Um, we could, we could sort of make comments out of character while other people were role playing and not interrupt. Um, yeah, I used to play over Google Hangouts, and I found Google Hangouts to be hilariously unstable when you use video. And I always prefer, if possible, to use video because I like to see people, see facial expressions. And also, I like visual things because, obviously, <laughs> because of course I do. Oh, I saw that. There was a thread on, on, on a Twitter about, about having meetings in Red Dead Redemption 2 instead of Zoom, which was hilarious, and I sort of loved it. Um, the downside is Zoom is free, and... Uh, PlayStation Gold or whatever you have to have to play Red Dead Redemption online costs like six bucks a month. So there's a downside. Although to be fair, if you have to go to that many Zoom meetings, it might not be might not be that big a downside. It might be worth it to you just for something different. Like, okay, look, you know what? Can we just, can we have this meeting anywhere else? <laughs> In any other way? But yeah, the bandwidth can be a real issue. We, we, we got together, my family got together on Zoom for Mother's Day and my parents' very bad rural internet made it challenging. <laughs> The audio is fine, but it makes the video pretty, pretty wobbly. Yeah, I feel, I feel like they might be scientists. I feel like the fact that your cat wants your ham is predictable and fair. And only to be expected, really. Ah, oh, yes. The one. I, I, I used to have a not human food cat and her exception was uh, cheese puffs from Trader Joe's. I don't know, don't know why that was, but that was, that was the thing she decided was worth it. Pr 
present cat is a human food cat. He will steal your stuff if you do not watch your plate. He will take it and he will eat it. It does not matter what your human food is. He will want it and he will try to take it. But he will especially want it if it is meat or olive oil. Can't explain the olive oil. Meat just makes a certain amount of sense, really. I have a friend who once cat sat for him and he stole a chicken tender, a whole chicken tender, from her plate and just ran away with it. Apparently I had not sufficiently warned her. And she will never allow either of us to forget this moment in which she was completely crushed to watch my cat just run off with a chicken tender. Oh yeah, that's this cat. This cat is the kind of cat that will eat through a bread bag. He once he once ate through a hard plastic container to get to uh, the whipped cream left over from a slice of pie. Well, he has very few teeth now. I suspect partly that is why. I was once looking for a new roommate and someone came by to look at the house. And, uh, unbeknownst to me, they left their, um, leftover dinner in a takeout box by the door, and their leftover dinner was paella. I did not realize they had done this, didn't see them do it, didn't think anything of it, didn't give them the speech about the cat stealing food. Uh, cat ate 100% of that paella. It was, it was gone. That person did not move into my house. <laughs> but in his defense, it was paella. It had like mussels and shrimp and, you know, delicious cat food things. But he, he polished it off. <laughs> yeah, I think that they was just like, they'd gone out to dinner and then you know, this was like scheduled on their way home or whatever, and they were just like, well, here's my leftovers, I guess I'll just put them next to my purse by the door. And I did not think to say anything about it, and they must not have had pets. Because, uh, because I feel an overwhelming urge to cover and or put away food in other people's houses. That's how bad it is. Like, I will have dinner at someone's house and we'll like go through like a buffet line type thing. And then I'll be, like, wanting to put their food away. Just being, being like, we can't, we can't leave this here. This isn't where food goes. The cat can reach it. Everything will go horribly wrong. There's like, there's child locks on the cabinets. That's, that's the kind of, that's the kind of cat, that's the kind of cat he is. Anyway, that person never got to finish their paella. So I hope they enjoyed the first part of it when they got to eat it at the restaurant. On the bright side, he is a very lovable cat. Difficult to stay mad at him. If he really wants you to care about him, he will climb up beside you and flop over sideways and look at you upside down. It's adorable. Yeah, he only does that. He only pulls things off of counters when he's in your lap. If he's sitting, he's not allowed to sit in my lap anymore when I work, especially on, a, on any craft thing, because he'll like pull my tools onto the floor and just watch them fall. If he's bored. 
for the most part, he's pretty good at just, like, sleeping on your lap. Because he's, you know, an old man. But as a child, he was a holy terror. Just quite the problem child. I think the th we may need to fiddle with the color, but the three tiered color is working. I think I might need to. I think that this one needs to be a dark. Well, music bot. Going into morning. At least it's still a nice, peaceful sort of song. No, oh, it turns out if you start streaming at 7, it starts to get dark in your studio. And then you're sitting there in the dark because you did not turn on the lights because when you started streaming, it was brightly daylight out. There's a fun timing fact for you. else needs. This color might be too dark might be too close to the background color. See you, Arcraft. Have a good day at work. I'll see you on Wednesday and Friday. Because it's true what I shouted to myself before I went to bed. This is a week of, of light, light duties and vacation. I'm going to finally read the new Murderbot book. I'm going to finish this illustration. I don't know what we'll do on Friday, um, but I have a little bit of a crazy idea that might work, but I'm not going to tell you about it until I'm, until I'm sure of my, until I'm sure of my plan. We'll see. See how it goes. But I promise I will not forget Friday tea time or that it is Friday or what time of day it is. <laughs> promise I will I will keep to my own schedule. Desert war zone. Well, music bot. I see that we've been too cheerful for too long. been too cheerful for too long and now we're in like a Japanese video game RPG We're getting there with our with with our leaves. Uh, 
Oh, good, they might be scientists. I'm glad that your mom's back surgery is no longer super delayed. Hope that she will feel better soon. Now that she can get the care she needs. Ah, yes, good, good God. That is the tricky bit, getting the test. Excellent. Yes, being forced to shelter in place and not being able to be properly mobile sounds extra bad. Although I guess if you're going to have to not be mobile, may as well do it when you're also not allowed to go do fun things. Maybe? I don't know. I guess it depends on, on your mindset about that kind of thing. I'm glad that her surgery is no longer postponed and that she will be able to be properly mobile soon. Aw, chilling at home with the poodle. See, look, I told you we were in a, in a JRPG. I mean, these are just these are just RPG areas, Desert War Zone, Leaf Village. Oh, thank you. They might be scientists. I'm I'm pretty pleased with the flowers. I think they I think they're they're clearly morning glories, which turns out to be a little bit difficult to communicate when they're all closed. Although morning glories have really fantastic buds, at least. Yeah, they close they close pretty distinctly, which is helpful. The the sort of bud swirl is pretty pretty great. And the kind of the kind of folding in they do is pretty distinct. Which is helpful. And so far no one's looked at it and gone, what flowers are those? Everyone's gone morning glories, so I feel as if it has succeeded. Trying to, to get some depth into the color of the leaves. Now that I've colored the leaves, I may need to change the green of the foliage lines again. We'll see. Pretty close. Oh yeah, that's true. Hibiscus kind of have a similar, similar twirly paper leaf shape. Oh, 
back to center. What's left? Let's see. Let's add a little bit of I feel like you should be lighter because you're a baby leaf. And then let's just add a little bit of depth here. Don't want to make the vine bits look too flat okay and then there's one more thing which is the the vines Let's, yeah the vines actually have kind of more of a say um, have more of a of a less green tint to them You might have dropped some hand, they might be scientists. It's fair, it's fair that, that Kitty wants to be sure. I mean, how sad would it be if there was him there and she didn't find it? And she missed it. Opening anxiety back up here, cause yeah, cause I had a good, had a good color for the vines for, that I can't see my buttons anymore I'm gonna have to turn on the light switch oh, there we go I know that nobody could see that but me but now I can see what I'm doing yes ham field survey she has to walk every inch of that measured out space and record if there is him. It is important. <laughs> Just the poetry gets brighter suddenly. So the ends, these ends kind of, they, they're green. So we'll have this one kind of fading, fading into the redder color. But those are vines like this. And a redder color. <laughs> it's a very distinctive shade of green. Uh See, this is another, another end bit. Oh man, color identifying baby plants. That's tricky. Oats are bluer than corn. Alfalfa is a very specific blue.
Ah. What? What was in your? What specifically was in your chicken feed? What will sprout? Seems like a fair test to me. Open invitation for livestock cuddling. Nice. I missed it. What did what did livestock cuddling photos? Have to go. I was a. Uh, let's just say I was I was less on the internet than I might have been yesterday. <laughs> Possibly related to the fact that I didn't realize today was Monday. I don't usually forget whole days. I uh, have no I have no particularly good excuse other than uh, the world. Just gonna be like, yeah, I don't know. Time time has no meaning. I I don't know what to tell you. God, that's like, the guy, uh, do Oh, what a good goat. What a, what a good, what a good goat. He only wants love. I just pause for a long time and then say, what is Wednesday? What is today? <laughs> oh, he thinks he's a big goat dog. He just needs he just needs the same the same hugs as the dogs get. That's fair. <laughs> Back to the sheep mines. Back to the sheep mines with you. Good luck with your Zoom meeting. Scientists. happening um, when they're all done I'll put them up um, as 8 by 10s but I've also got postcards that I'll probably just send to anybody who's a patron at all in any level and wants one so look for that on look for a note about that on patreon because uh, I only have the addresses for people who have already subscribed at the please send me art level 
so I might need addresses for people I don't have. But I do indeed wish to send you postcards. Postcards of anger and anxiety, which uh, I promise is a more more lovable thing than it sounds. <laughs> Let me mail you my anxiety. Beautiful, beautiful anxiety. Postcards from the edge, yeah. Postcards. Postcards from, from my feelings. <laughs> Let me send you a postcard from my feelings. I feel like the music box is like, oh yeah, this is just the music we wrote to play on the, uh, on the waiting terminal. We didn't even title it right, we've just, we're just calling it Terminal B. <laughs> Made sense to us. Please mind the gap. <laughs> Your shuttle will be arriving soon. Please wait behind the yellow line. mind the gap. I feel like I feel like the gap in an airlock sense is a, a lot more problematic in fact. So maybe we should hope there's not a gap to mind. Have a good night, Figment's Maid. Thanks for, for joining my late stream. We're gonna we're gonna wrap up here soon anyway. Just doing the last bits of color. I think we're pretty much there. Just gonna Touch up the line art, I think, is the next thing. Where is the line art? There's the line art. Yeah, it works for the lighter, but not for the darker. <laughs>
feel about that? I don't know how I feel about it. What if I just up the saturation of the line art? What about that? That might work. More of a green. It's better than the other anyway. Hello, Hanacomb! I forgot it was Monday. <laughs> Thanks for joining the end of my multi-hour late stream. It's the, it's the part where I debate the color of the line art forever. Because I didn't put the flower lines and the plant leaf lines on different layers because poor planning. <laughs> so now, uh, now it's actually kind of fiddly to, to edit. But I want to see at least like a portion of it colored that way. Uh, we started streaming at 7. Um, I'm probably just going to go for a little while longer while I while I wrap this up. Kind of the goal is to finish this, so I'll probably just stream until I finish it. But it's getting there. At this point, it's really, it's really just me messing with the colors. Oh, that's slightly better. I feel like I like that slightly better, actually. Better on the leaves, anyway. Oh, thank you, Hannah. I'm glad that you like it. It's, uh... It's taken some fiddling. But it got there in the end. Beached. Um, the inside of exhaustion is probably going to be the same gold leaf that the others are for consistency. But I have found that it is helpful to do that bit last. because I can always choose not to do it, and I think the colors of everything else is more important. Like I don't want the gold leaf to affect sort of the color choices that I make too much, because I feel I can always choose to not use it. I can always just pick something else if I need to. That the colors of the plants are more the focal. Point. And therefore, a more important thing to focus on. Okay, actually, here's the, I think I want the vines to be this, this color. Just to make it extra complicated. I think I'm gonna... complicate things even further.
Anyway, yeah, the big gold leaf. That is the final step. After we finish the leaf colors. But I'd be careful not to like overrun any of the the flowers with green. Set of dice. I don't. I don't know. I think it's a little bit complicated for a set of dice. Just offhand. Just, just offhand. I have to say, I don't know that that everything belongs on dice. <laughs> just make bigger dice. I don't I don't think everything belongs on dice. I don't I don't think it's true. I belong on dice. Or dice belong on you? Dice belong to me. Yeah, that. The dice, the dice, the dice are yours. All of the dice. For viewers who don't know, Anacomb streams on Wednesday nights from 5 to 8 and has a dice obsession. <laughs> um, although I suppose that the dice obsession part has already become clear over the course of the last few minutes of conversation. But she streams art, so you should go watch her on Wednesdays. I host her on Wednesdays here to encourage you to go watch her on Wednesdays. It's 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 a fair it's a fair choice, Mirafor. <laughs> I I admit that I have uh, been drinking a lot more a lot more chamomile tea than I usually do. I feel like I've done this wrong. So I'll need it to stay green. I would say a dice collector now, like a collector in the in the sense of like she's gonna have a dice room soon. Collector. <laughs> Oh, Animal Crossing dice would be adorable. Also, Hannah, why are we not why are we not Nintendo friends? Why can I not come to your Animal Crossing town? What's up with that? I 
I mean, I'm not, I'm not online right now. But, uh, that's what I was doing when I forgot to stream today. <laughs> it's playing Animal Crossing. Oh no. Really, he's, he's shooting himself in the foot. You know no one's gonna pay off that last mortgage. That final room. No one's, no one's paying Tom Nook back for that. As far as I am concerned, that's just a reward for all of my hard work. Also, why do I why why do I have to pay for someone else's housing plot? Like why do I have to buy land and then place the house and then set up the construction site? What's up with that? That doesn't seem fair. Why is that my financial responsibility? Am I now their landlord? Do they pay me rent? What kind of scam are we running? I have a genuine turnip Animal Crossing problem. And that problem is that I am nocturnal and the turnips are on sale when I am asleep. It's a very specific problem that I have. I can never purchase turnips. I'm relying entirely on the bury money in a hole in the ground economy. Yeah, that was worrying, wasn't it? Tommy and Timmy staying up literally all night, just always there. You're like, you guys seem like you should sleep. Like, shouldn't you close ever at some point? It feels like maybe... Looks like maybe you're working too hard. <laughs> yeah, if I bury if I bury money in the ground, it grows into a tree that uh that blooms money. A perfectly valid choice at Animal Crossing. The uh the 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 money burying tree based economy. The 30k, I mean, I'll, I'll occasionally, I'll occasionally just bury all the money I have. I'm patient. I mean, what's, what's Nook gonna do? Come around and break my kneecaps? I own this whole island. Wait, oh, okay, I don't know what the 30k thing is, clearly. What is the 30k thing? Have I been have I been using the, the 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 ground money economy incorrectly? I mean, I have played other Animal Crossing games, so I have been behaving as I would in previous games. Oh, 
Uh, my understanding is that the money you put in the hole is the money that gets tripled when the tree becomes a grown tree. That is my understanding of the tree-based economy of Animal Crossing. It's my entire understanding. It is no more in-depth than that. You know it can be any amount of money, right? If you plant that thousand K, you'll get a tree that gives you three thousand K. The money, the money tree will always appear and triple your money. I think so? I don't know. I've accidentally done it and gotten 3,000k back. So... So yeah, I don't know. I knew I, I knew that it was supposed to be at least ten, ten thousand bells. Um, but yeah, it can be more. The the. I think it's the idea is that it's a minimum. Yeah, I I put I've put like a hundred bells, or what ninety ninety thousand bells and gotten that back three times uh the tree just the tree just gives you back three times your money um but it might only work 100% of the time if it's at least 10,000 uh, but as I said I did accidentally plant a thousand and got three thousand tree behaved as expected so so I don't know. I don't know what the what the money tree rules are, exactly. Uh -huh. I've largely cheated by starting the game two months late, and then just uh, asking my rich, my rich Animal Crossing town friends to give me stuff. <laughs> That's how I've been playing Animal Crossing. We so there needs to be there should be a sheep guana villager. Hannah, you missed you missed the beginning of the stream when I was telling everyone about about uh, Leopold, my lion villager that I've decided is definitely a serial killer. A classy serial killer, sort of like a Hannibal Lecter serial killer, but definitely a serial killer. I mean, he can stay. I'm not going to kick him out of town, obviously. Where would we be with no with no town serial killer? Things would get would get so quiet and boring. But uh well, let's just say I gifted him an anatomical model and he was very excited. Like, I've always wanted one of these, how did you know, excited. It was just, you know. The other funniest thing so far that has occurred amongst my villagers is that I have an a alligator, a new alligator neighbor. And so in Animal Crossing, all the animals have cute little, like, catchphrases that they say. You know, like... Like, there's a deer that calls me Deary, because it's a pun, I guess. Um, you know, just, just cute little... Cute little sayings. And, uh... And the alligator just... just it's just G-R-A-A-A-A-A-A-G-H. It's just Gah! at the end of everything she says. <laughs> and I'm just like, I don't, 
I don't know how to feel about this. I mean, it's it's appropriate, but um, but like at the end of everything you tell me, are you just like alligator growling? It's intimidating. I don't want to talk to you. I'm concerned. The anteater jock. Oh, there's an anteater jock. Oh, that's adorable. I feel like I, I feel like I want an anteater in my town. I have a baboon named Boone. Who is so? Uh, he's hilariously uncreative. It's adorable. His his catchphrase is just baboon. Like he was like, I don't know. Uh, sure. This this makes sense to me. I have uh, I have two deer, and I've decided that they're siblings. I was gonna try and set them up together, but Eric is the uh, uh, the childlike personality. You know, the one that like talks to the bugs in his floor and uh, wants to play with you. And it was too weird. You don't. <laughs> Uh, you want you want Marcel to leave, but you're you're not willing to actually to actually make him go. Oh no. Eventually, eventually, villagers sort of test the waters and ask if you're, and 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 ask about thinking about moving, and you can let them go or. Crush their dreams and demand they stay in your hometown. Let them fly free or beg them to stay. Twice. Oh no, what are you doing to what are you doing to poor Lobo? <laughs> that he wants to leave so badly. Yeah, I felt that. I was like, am I not? I gave you, I gave you bugs. I gave you presents. Did, why, did you not like it here? What happened? <laughs> I tried so hard to be your imaginary friend. You can't, you can't, you can't leave, you can't leave him by himself. He's a pack animal. <laughs> At least he bluffs. Oh, sea bass. Okay, I think I've touched up all of the all the line work. I think I think. Just gonna properly touch up my colors here. Get any spots I missed. Oops. 
Wait, there's more than one anteater? Oh, good night, Mirafora. Sleep well. There's 200 distinct villagers. Of course there. Of course. Um, thanks for hanging out for the for the last bit of this stream, which was just just Animal Crossing. <laughs> just me being like, oh hey, what am I gonna do today? Tell you about my Animal Crossing village. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh, I have a friend who has a ruby who is um, an, a, a rabbit with red eyes and, uh, and a house that is just space. <laughs> it's, it's just space. There's astronaut suits and, uh, and it looks like there's no atmosphere and <laughs> it's just, uh, it's just space. And I don't know how he lives in there. But he is a little disturbing. Okay, just about, just about done. Keep finding things I messed up. Oh, Ruby! She's based on the. That's what. That makes more sense now, somehow. <laughs> I just walked in and was like, whoa! Whoa, your house, Ruby! Your, your house has no atmosphere, and I don't know what to do with this information. <laughs> Okay, last thing, last thing in the last few minutes, <gasps> a luchador bird, oh I'm so jealous, I've got two deer, a lion, a bab, I love the baboon, I love Boone, he has a little blue butt, and uh, and Mira the bunny, and an alligator, <laughs> uh, I need to build more houses, I want a luchador bird, I want This is a WrestleMania floor complete with cheering crowds. Oh man. That's that's amazing. All all Animal Crossing neighbors are weird. And amazing. Oh no. Hmm. I'm just gonna fill this this space and then figure out how to how to deal. That seems like it kind of works. Ah, I sort of, I sort of see the problem here. Hang on, I'm gonna have to do some, some trickery. Can 
Ooh, Hero of the Winds. Very exciting. That was incorrect. That, yes. No, somehow... Somehow there is still a gap. Where? Where is the... why? Why are you like this, Photoshop? Oh. <laughs> right. I see what has happened. I've diagnosed the problem. And now... Now I shall fix it. See you later, Hannah. Have a good night. I am about to wrap up myself. Oh man, I raced in that one too. Curses. Fine. I'll do it the hard way. Coloring in my mask so that I can gold leaf my, my gold leaf my exhaust. And uh, as soon as I finish that, I'll have the wrap up. And we'll finish there. I feel like it's gotten quite late for everyone. Everyone but me. Have a good night, get to know nature. Streamed past everyone's bedtime. This is what happens when I forget. And to, oh good, and, and everyone left and, and my music quit. Come back, pretzel. Play play for me again. Play? No? You don't? Please, please, four two music? There it goes. I mean, I know I've only got a few minutes left, but. But if I'm going to have to sit here by myself and finish the last touches of the illustration, because I can't, it's too close now, I can't bear to just end the stream without finishing it. I need a good, I need a good wrap up to the story. <laughs> so we're going to finish this. So that I can close a future YouTube video of this stream with an image that is finished. means 
just tidying everything up. Every time there's overlap. Actually, I don't know. I might I feel like the gold leaf is a little bit big texture wise. Let's see if that's a little bit better. At a hundred percent. Oh, I would not know because I left I left the other layer on top of it. Just I think it might be better. If it's a little bit. Oh, let's look at anxiety. How oh, I turned off that layer. Oh. Yeah, it it feels like it's it's still it's okay, about the same. Acceptable. bits of touch up and then places where I accidentally erased too far in that one's okay There we go. And I did it backwards again. A little bit brighter. Saturated. Is that about the same? That feels like it's getting to the, about the same tint. Maybe a little bit too much extra saturation. There we go. And just do a little bit of a highlight burn. I did that for anxiety. A little bit, a little bit brighter. There we go. One last thing. Just gonna fiddle with this briefly.
because... This is just not showing up enough. So I think for just these darker leaves, I need a darker color of line art. As a final touch up. This is the kind of thing that I fiddle with for a while usually. I regret that I did not put the line art on its own. That I didn't separate all of the all the line art out on its own layer. But what can you do? These lines just needed to show up better. They were disappearing pretty firmly into the background. And I want to be able to see all of these lines I bothered to draw. I don't want the whole thing to get darker. I don't want the, the lighter lines to get darker on the uh, vines. And I definitely don't want the blue and the flowers to get darker. Because it's already pretty dark. And it's working for me the way it is. So just these. Just the darker. Just the darker leaves. A little bit darker. I see some bits of white that show through that I will need to touch up later. But that can happen later. Just want to make sure that I've got the overall effect in. So I can give you the final view. Pretty much complete look. All the little touch ups are things that you won't see unless you're right up close. They can wait. I'm worrying about printing it. Hmm, found a bit where I forgot to make it brown. that now. Just uh, devoted to finishing this. wall streaming since I've started. I want to get it all the way done. I was trying to ignore the little touch-ups, but I really, 
me to kind of ignore that, but. We'll see, it'll probably be different later. I'll post it on the internet and everyone will be like, that's not quite what it was. Because I will have fiddled with it some more. But for now, this feels like oops, like the right colors. Trying not to use this many colors of liner is what happened. It's become clear that I must. Because this, yeah, see, like it just doesn't show up until I do this. It's just. It's just too late. darker leaves and it loses the detail and I don't want to lose the detail the detail is important I put it there for a reason See, now I've just started listening to the music and not talking anymore. There's only so many different ways you can describe coloring lines green before you're just belaboring the point. Nearly there, I said 20 minutes ago. But really, nearly there. The last few. This one, let's do this one again. And that's, I think it. Those can stay kind of the same. This, okay, maybe this one. Oops. Maybe this one. Just that last bit of contrast there. Ah. Got you. Little green leaf up here. There we go. 
that way. Good. All of them. Yes. Okay. And that's pretty much try and get nope, just gonna be like this. Fine. And that's pretty much done. Aside from the inevitable fiddling. That's uh that's the next illustration in the the words that are my sad emotions series. Exhaustion. With wilted morning glories. I will probably touch up the colors, but whatever. It is what it is. It's basically done. And that's where I'm going to wrap it up. If you're uh, still here, thanks for sticking it out. It's kind of late for most people. If you're watching this later on YouTube, here's the closing stuff. You can find me on Patreon at Sarah with T. You can join my Patreon and get sketch requests or prints in the mail, some of which might be this very illustration. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, where I will tell you when I stream, unless, uh, like today, I've lost all sense of time and place and forget. And I hope you have a good week. I will see you on Friday for Friday Tea Time. Stay safe, everybody. Be kind to yourselves and each other. Have a good night. Bye.